Hey, good people, Batavia here. Welcome to day four. Day four? Yeah. So in the opening of the last video I shared, I mentioned that I'll be taking the camera out every day this month and you will see footage from each of those days. It will be in a combination of ways. Uh, so the last video covered the first three days of the month. We are now on day four. We have a list of things to do over the next several days. I'll even call it over the next week in the garden. I hope that you enjoy. I'm pretty excited about, we'll call it a project because I love a good project. Pretty excited about this month's project. We're gonna let the planes go overhead. Good morning. You know my new rule. <laughs> Joke with my neighbor on this side just dozens and dozens of times. I have been out and about in the backyard and I start, startled her. And so I told her a couple of weeks ago, my new rule is I'll be milling about, but I shall wait until you speak to me so I don't scare you. And so she got a good laugh. I have about 10 items that I've made a note of. I need to sow the peas for fall, label and sow my kale green stock. I have a new green stock that I'm teetering on whether or not I'll plant out this year. That's not on the list, but teetering on that. I need to work up this backyard bed over here. So this is where I harvested the cabbage and the beets from. We're gonna do some direct sowing there. Uh, the beds in the front yard, those narrow beds underneath the um, trellis where the garlic grew. I need to work up those beds and for me working up means you know potentially adding some compost to them, maybe adding soil, um, adding some fertilizer so I can get those things planted out. I need to water and check on that tomato cage that is right under the window in the front yard. We've spent a lot of time in that second bed when you kind of come up the walkway in the front yard that's the main tomato planting but i have another one in the front yard garden kind of on the side of the porch underneath the window and i have some trouble out of one of the plants i have some uh, blossom in rot and so i'm not sure that i'll be able to resolve it it seems pretty widespread like the most widespread i've seen in my tomato plants before um, but we'll check on those and then i have harvest and these aren't necessarily in the order I'm gonna do them in, to be fair. So today for sure we'll be harvesting some things and I'm still at the ends and odds stage with my garden since I planted a lot of my summer plants out and let's say like the end of May up through like almost the middle of June. Um, so some of those things are just starting to bear fruit. I need to do some spot fertilizing and that is in various spaces. So I was thinking about this when I was making my coffee I know for sure that I fertilized like these containers over here, uh, which are the 20 gallon grow bags. And I know for sure I fertilized these containers and then a couple in the front yard. Everything else is questionable about the timing that I did it in. So I think what I'm going to do is over the course of this week, I'll make notes on what I fertilize and when. And it won't be as critical because I know that I'll be doing it basically like in early August. And I may come back in one more time at some point in September to do more fertilizing. And that'll probably be it for the season. But that's kind of the clean sweep of it. It's gonna be the best way for me to make sure the plants are fed and kind of keep track of it. Uh, so fertilizing. Um, and then I have to bring out some seeds that I, again, seeded. <laughs> in the base of it. I want to bring them out to see if I can get them to germinate. There's some things for fall. Questionable about whether or not I have enough time in my calendar to actually produce, but we're going to give it a go. And yeah, I think that's, I don't know, that's like 10-ish. So let's dig in. So this is cabbage, broccoli, some collards. It's probably going to blow off. <laughs> And then I have some cilantro. We're all seeded like two days ago, so no germination yet. I mixed up this fish and seaweed fertilizer for some of the lettuce that I have indoors. And I'm gonna use what's left of it on the beans. And then this basil here, both can benefit from it. So since I watered this yesterday, I don't need to do like a full watering. I'm just going to kind of go pocket by pocket. If I 
would have thought about it yesterday, I would have poured, like using my two gallon watering can and poured the water in here, uh, the seaweed, fish and seaweed fertilizer, I should say. So I'm just eyeballing this really. Draws flies, as you can imagine. So I brought that basil over here too. I hope that I'll have an opportunity to sit down on my little patio area and enjoy some part of the day. And I'd rather not have flies joining me, at least not because of this. <laughs> Okie doke, so our seven tier leaf green stalk, the pockets for the seven tier leaf are a little bit smaller than the original five tier, but this should work really, really well, hence the leaf for the kale that I will be sowing. Every tier will get a kale plant. I'm gonna do one plant per pocket. Westlander kale, red boar, Two packages of that. I have scarlet, which I'm gonna put, which is red boar and uh, scarlet are gonna be purplish. Ah! <laughs> if I could do a better job at organizing myself, the time I would save. I have been looking all over for the white, the white Russian kale. And I'm almost embarrassed to say that it is in my pile of kale that I plan on selling it, you know. All right, so let's see. That's one, two, white Russian kale is three, Vates kale is four, Premier kale is five, Lacinato kale, which we have planted already. I have multiple packages of that, uh, is six, and then Scarlet is seven. So, I think I'm gonna start just by labeling them just so I don't get myself confused. So I'll label and then bring you back to chat as we sew them. Okie doke, so changed gears. I went with Westlander, Red Boar, Scarlet, so I put the red boar and the scarlet together because that'll make it easier for me to really detect the difference just in the kind of visual of the leaves. And then Vates, White Russian Premier, and then Dino at the end. Um, so I'm actually gonna sell multiple seeds per pocket, but thin it out to end up being just one plant per. Um, since it's getting on in the season, I wanna make sure that I have some good germination. And so to increase my chances of that, we're going to sub in something else because I don't have any Westlander kale seeds. <laughs> it was just like a um, kind of curly-ish kale. So let's take that down. I have a few other varieties in the house that I'm actually going to stop and make sure that I want whatever other variety I'm going to sub in to be up here. All right, be right back. Okay, Doug, so I brought out the remainder of my kale packets. So blue curl scotch, I have red Russian kale, dwarf blue, dwarf blue curled kale, Casper kale, which has a picture of the kale sitting on snow, thousand head kale, which is known to be super, super large as far as the leaves. And then one more package of lacinato kale, which is the dino kale that I already have marked here. So I thought about it as I was sifting through them. I am curious about the blue curl Scott and the Casper kale. I've not actually grown those in my garden before. So I'm gonna go with for this top tier, the blue curl Scotch kale. We'll make that the plant here. Maybe we'll find space for the Casper kale somewhere else in the garden. So I have the plant support for the green stalk and I'm gonna put those here 
and then I have insect netting because I still have plenty of sightings for the cabbage butterfly. And as these plants come up, I just don't want them to be gnawed away yet. I actually, in my area, I find like the cabbage butterfly flies around all the way up until the point of frost, basically. So I don't get much reprieve from them. Uh, maybe they're fewer, but I'm not quite sure. My method here, one label per tier, because the tier has all the same variety. I'll start seeding with the pocket that has the tier. So when I come back around, I'll know I've already seeded that. This soil has been inside of these Let's see, they've been inside of the planter for about maybe two weeks or something. And so I've watered it a few times. It's rained a few times. So I'm just doing a gentle fluffing of the soil. And for the seeds that I have plenty of, I'll do like three seeds and a small area. And I'm putting a fourth, about a fourth of an inch of soil on top. For example, this one, I don't have that many seeds. So I'm going to be stingy. I'll do... I have enough to do two per pocket. And so as I sew them, I am just covering them up so I don't have to come back and do that. This is the one green stalk so far where I have mixed up my own soil mix. For the others, I've kind of in the initial planting, I put like kind of regular bagged soil. This one, I made up my own using some spent potting soil and then, um, compost, some perlite, and then some fertilizer. So that's already mixed in. And so they should be able to get off to a good start. I'll link the video where I go into detail about my container mix. There are a few different ways, depending on the material I have, that I will mix it up with. I'm trying to do them in the center of the pocket opening and closer to the edge, only because even though I'm sowing multiple seeds, I'm only going to let one live. Uh, I'll be thinning them otherwise, and I want them to kind of grow in the center. For other plantings, when I'm intentionally like the beans, sowing multiple seeds and want to keep multiple plants, I'd spread them around a little bit more. Now for kale, given that you could harvest it at any size, I'm not as concerned about like if there is some poor germination, even with kind of the double and triple sowing of seeds, I can come back in and plug in some additional seeds where needed. We're still at the beginning of August and being able to plant these out or sow the seeds now will work out well as far as how much growth I'll have a chance to get off of these plants you know, before it gets super duper cold. And then kale is super cold tolerant. I have a frost cover too for the green stalk. So I could of course cover that, you know, the planter with the frost cover. But generally speaking, they should do fine. Even uncovered as we get into November and even parts of December, I imagine. So we're all set. I'm gonna sew these and get these watered well. We'll keep an eye on these for the next few days and look for them to germinate. I'll probably wait until that point to get them covered. Not sure yet. Or I probably should just go ahead and cover them, right? <laughs> So I haven't purchased shade cloth yet. I've been using from time to time this really kind of cheap landscape fabric. I have no idea the percentage of shade it's providing or percentage of sun it's letting in, but I'm using it to cover some of these mature plants like the cabbage, which is done growing that I just haven't harvested yet. I'm gonna pull it all the way over. It doesn't hurt to cover this other part of the bed that doesn't have much growing in it. Hopefully that way I can minimize how much soil is drying up. So the sun at just after 10 is bright on this side and then somewhere around two o'clock, three o'clock, it'll start shining on this side. I have another cover in the house that I can bring out, another one of these and I'll cover this side of it. And again, this is just 
a step I'm taking because I don't want those cabbage that are basically ready to bake. So I see the poop and I know that there is another hornworm in here. And I can see the damaged branches. So it looks like it's gonna be one more trip out here early morning or late at night. This is more of that uh, landscape fabric and it may not be effective, but I wanted to give it a try. I'm just covering the tomatoes that are right up against the cattle panel trellis and then this netting um, as they ripen or at least get some color on them. A lot for a single tomato. It's a little pierced based on the raised bed, but it shall still be yummy. Ah, I see one, a big fat one, which would have been on the side of the bed that I didn't get to. All right, so it is right by the pole. I have to remember that when I go on the other side. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to day five. So it's gonna be a quick morning. I have probably minutes maybe up to an hour before it rains. I can hear the thunder and all of the kind of gray behind me. It's just that it's super cloudy. Um, but we're gonna do things this morning that are most important just before rain. Now, it doesn't appear that it's gonna rain all day. This could be just a quick, a quick shower, which if it is, then that's great. I'll be able to get out back out here at some point maybe during the day, <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna check on some things that need to be harvested that won't like the extra rain. I'm gonna unfortunately put, or fortunately, put my tarp back on this bed because I still have those cabbage in there. And, you know, quiet as kept, I could go ahead and just harvest those since they keep so well, um, but not this morning. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna cover the bed with the tarp. We're gonna check on mostly tomatoes, uh, look at a couple of cucumbers if they're of size. They'll be fine in the rain, but I don't want them to get much larger for some of the pickling cucumbers. B. Uh, we'll check on some beans. I wanna get those picked. Again, they're coming in handfuls at a time um, before the rain, and if we have time, we'll sow some things. You know, we're gonna swap out this fabric for the tarp, and I'm actually going to pull out those seed trays and I have some lettuce that has some nice growth on it. Since there's so many clouds and so little sun, I'm gonna pull them out and let them get some of this good rain water. Check it on the last ears of the corn. So this is the lettuce that I started so far. Parasylum was started on 625 and then Outrageous Red, Super Red Romaine, Little Jim and Tennis Ball, all of those were started on 7-9, so they're just under about 30 days old. And so I'm gonna leave these out here, again, to get some good rainwater, and I'll pull the other seed trays out. I think I'm just gonna set these like in the potato bed since there's not a lot growing in there, uh, just to be able to give it a little bit of cover. Cover from the animals, to be quite frank. Now remind me that's where I put them because I'll be walking around trying to figure out where. The first tray were the brassicas and this one is the cilantro. I took them inside last night. Maybe not that much room there. So I'm grabbing the eggplant, a few peppers. There's this dish I found by this chef online that I like to make. It's kind of like a fried pickle eggplant and I keep forgetting to make it. So sometimes when you get just these few things, I will spray these with just a little bit of like avocado oil, like cooking spray, and put them in the air fryer for maybe four or five minutes and add them to any dish. I had it yesterday on some salad and adds, it still has a little bit of crunch at that time um, it's on whatever the veggie setting temperature is on mine. Just so you know, 
my outdoor light above the garage has come on because it's just that dark outside and it is 7.30 a.m. Uh, so I'm teetering on whether or not I should pull all of the onions just to get it done or if I should leave some in the ground. I kind of feel like these are all done growing. So as I actually speak these words, I think I'm just gonna pull all of them. And again, we'll have one more clear bed um, and that should do it. Okie doke, so that is the rain. I still have to pull these onions. We're gonna wrap up the video here. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. If you haven't subscribed already, consider that too. Look forward to seeing y'all on the next one. Oh, good night. Oh, that's a wet one. <laughs>